Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joyce Ng. Joyce, Joyce, we're going to have a lot of laughs today. What kind of laughs, though? Like lowercase LOLs for the Emmys comedy season. Are, are any sentence case LOLs or any all caps LOLs? No all caps this year. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe some LL, L, LMAOs. I like, I like dropping an LMAO. I, I have a lot of LMAOs about um, shows that are not in the comedy race. Interesting. Yeah. We'll talk about those at a later date, I'd imagine. Not not in the way that like L- LMAO it's bad, but like I'm actually laughing at the show because it's funny. <laughs> uh we talked about all our picks last week we'll do a little more in-depth on comedy joyce uh, the big news in in the in the news front was a great news for you the gentleman just a big hit for netflix joyce are you excited your favorite show my favorite show that i haven't even finished so still i've only seen one episode but all in on um yeah it's like it's like number one for the third week in a row or whatever i don't know these fake numbers who knows what's I, I'm reading a variety article here from March 18th to 24th. The gentleman had 11.7 million views, just edging out three body problem with 11 million views over its first four days of availability. Yeah, the early numbers on three body, not too hot. No. So when we do these picks, we always are like, what's the Netflix show going to be in the category? And mm-hmm. when we did these last week, you picked the gentleman in your comedy category because there's no other really shows unless you're really going to go deep on Girls 5 Eva, which it doesn't seem like people. Well, have like I, I had that um, before it premiered and uh, that did not have uh, an immediate Netflix bump. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When was the last time you probably maybe know this off the top of your head? When was the last time Netflix wasn't nominee in, in the comedy category? Well, I mean, like, since it started, like, putting out shows. Yeah. Like, Like it's frequently in there. It's, yeah, like, last year, um, last year didn't have anything. No, No. last year had Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Last year was Wednesday, because, and that was, like, its big show. And then it didn't have anything two years ago. Right? I'm looking right now. It didn't have anything two years ago. Um, Because then in 2021, we had Cobra Kai and Emily in Paris. Correct. Two years ago, we had nothing. Um. Yeah, we've had Kaminsky. So, but twenty one um, had Kaminsky and Emily in Paris and Cobra Kai. Yeah, and we've had Russian Doll. Hmm. And Dead so, to Me in twenty twenty. Yeah, and Glow. Remember Glow? Your fave. Love Glow. Master of None. Kimmy Schmidt. So I love Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. So. Uh, it, yeah. it 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 helps to have like the Netflix visibility, right? Like we know they're going to support their shows and they're going to get it seen. I don't know. I mean, like at this point, I feel like sometimes they've had or they have so many shows now, like they just kind of are like, here you go. And then, you know, hope people discover it and like it catches on by itself sometimes too. But it is obviously the biggest streaming service and it has helped shows like Breaking Bad and Schitt's Creek when they started streaming mm-hmm. on Netflix. Um, and that translated, I mean, Breaking Bad was already like at the Emmys, but it translated to like higher linear viewership for its new seasons. And then with Schitt's, it actually translated into awards. Right. Now with the comedy, we did this last week. It does feel like there's at least six, maybe seven slots that are just like, pretty safe or, or we relatively have six. Safe. it's just like last year we have six that are like solid <laughs> the bear hacks abbott only murders curb and what we do in the shadows we both have reservation dogs i'm, I'm piggy, piggybacking off your 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 intel from t uh tca i mean I, it's like in seventh now so. it is it's very locked in and then in eighth is palm royale which i have there your fave my favorite show uh, did a panel last week with the the cast and uh, so now you got to keep it. You can never staying go. right there, locking it in, locking Kristen Wiig in for comedy actress, and then the gentleman in ninth. Then I'm a Virgo, Frazier, Girls Five Ever round out the rest of the list. So um, the, the problem I have with Palm Royale sticking with it, I have like I said, I got it there in eighth. I'm gonna leave it there for now, and I think it could be in there based on like the overall of uh, the craft support maybe right a lot of different like the different you know the the disciplines i think will be pretty excited about the show 
Um, but again, are people watching it? Apple traditionally not the most watched, but are the right people watching it? And that's maybe what matters more. But we we know like they they can get nominations for their shows, yes. but uh, oftentimes they fall short of series, as we've seen. Now, last year they missed shrinking, but they got yeah, Ted and it, and it got it got acting nominations. Got Ted in previously here. Well, Ted Basically, was again like they Ted. it gets in the series when they're huge. When it's Ted, and is Palm Royale going to be Ted? It's been a week, so you tell me. Probably not. But I'm not I'm not sold on the gentleman either. I I mean they Netflix could throw out the 11 million uh, download views or whatever, and I still don't believe that's really making an impact either. But it's basically in the same realm as like a Bridgerton and Emily in Paris on Cobra Kai at this point. Right. Any, what about, I'm just going to throw some names out. You tell me if there's a, a, a world where these happen. What about ghosts? Your fave ghosts. <laughs> CBS, baby. I, uh, I, I don't really see it for the network shows there's just so many shows that i don't know how they would make it in but i'm like looking at this but list. we know it, we know they don't watch a lot anyway i know i guess i'm just not i, I think see the thing i'm wondering the thing i feel like with palm royale and this could change when we do these picks we're going to be talking about this for four months basically uh the thing i feel like is at least i know there's a lot of visibility around the show so i'm hoping like the right people watch it the gentleman i feel like is a big populist hit. So maybe it is like the Wednesday or Cobra Kai of it, but there does feel like there's a million other things that Netflix is juggling and will be juggling. And then maybe it's not as visible in the end. As but counterintuitive. In, as in comedy, like it's like that and girls by Bubba. Right. So, and it's, I, I mean, so, you know, as we know last year, they, changed the ballot they got rid of the unlimited ballot mm -hmm. so now you can only nominate um as many things as there are slots in the category mm -hmm. so we we will know the final number of slots when ballots drop in june but in comedy series and drama series it's set at eight they'll set so it in eight. this this category like so in this case like it doesn't matter with the unlimited ballot like it, it's always um at or like the proportional rule i mean it's mm -hmm. always at eight. So uh, like we know like they watch The Bear, right? And like mm -hmm. they watch Abbott and Hacks will be back. You know, they watch it. Like Murders is like safely in basically. Mm -hmm. Like Herb should be okay too. Um, and Shadows has gone in before. So like those are the six, right? Those are the six, yeah. That should be okay. And then it's like, are they going to put in the effort to fill out the other two slots? <laughs> and it's like, what else are they watching? <laughs> put mm -hmm. it in? And it's like, they could just, you know, have just watched The Gentleman and just because it was on Netflix. They and just it's put like it been in. Number Netflix. one for like a month. And it was right. like, oh, I watched like two episodes of that. That was fine. I've heard of it. I'll put it in. Okay. Um, like, what, what would you do if you watch, you had like five faves? And then like, would you bother to fill out the other three slots even though you don't really have you know you're not passionate about any of the other ones if i had five, i would have if i was a voter i would have my five faves let's say right which i think we could clearly see here on the list maybe even right out number one <laughs> maybe even four faves but we're gonna say right number one yes yeah maybe even four faves uh and then i would fill out the rest of my ballot which shows that i love that i knew would not get nominated so my personal list would be like uh let me look at I'm just scrolling through like ghosts, <laughs> ghost loot after party, right? Shit like that, where I'm just like, this stuff after is not party getting nominated. season two. At least I've seen it. This stuff's not getting nominated based on a true story. Like all these like silly shows that are not in there really seriously considered. I would just throw in because I was like, well, whatever, might as well. But I think you're right. Maybe people would just not fill out the ballot or put something they just care don't care about. Or come to Gold Derby and be like, okay, I got my five faves. What's seven, eight, nine, a six, seven, eight? Okay, yeah, I'll just write those down. Yeah, like how many people will feel pressure to to fill out all eight slots? And how many would just be like, I don't have time for this. Like, I watched the bear and that's Is it. Is it that hard to fill out eight slots though? Are they They're that so, busy? Like, I, I, I think we all know by now that like 
voters they or or like awards fans care more about this process than the actual voters <laughs> do you know yeah. we see how aggrieved um film twitter gets over the anonymous ballots for the oscars mm -hmm. You know, it's like you you care more about this than like these people do. You know, like some like I mean, I'm sure some of them, you know, put in thought to it. Like it's not to say like they're all like this, but you know, like a majority of them probably just like this is, you know, not my job. This is like a privilege, sure, and like I'll vote for like the three shows I watch. Right. Right. But they don't think about it too much. Why don't we talk a little about the top of this list? just in general, because we were talking about this before. We can't, um, the bear clearly winning. Like that one, that feels like pretty surprised if it didn't win at this point, uh, based on the response to season two and how they love season one. But man, Abbott is having a great year and hacks. We can't really talk about it, but I, I got to see the first two episodes choice. They're great. Um, I think hacks will just be runner up. Yeah. Just like, just like for season one, probably season two as well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the thing I was thinking with these is I'm like, both of those, like the top contenders are Ab like the bear at hacks and Abbott are top three in the odds and everybody's got the bear. Like we said, but man, hacks and Abbott, I think are better than these third seasons than they were in their second seasons, which means nothing maybe because the bear is obviously ascendant as well. But like, man, imagine if one of these shows was in drama, how easy it would be to pick them to win. Are not you trying any to pick the bear in drama right no, now? No, I'm not I don't think any of them would qualify in drama, but I'm just like th this is a the top three here are way better than the top two in drama, let's say. Comedy is a lot more subtle than drama. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. But yeah, like the bear is just gonna win again and season three is gonna drop in June. So it's gonna be the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it's like that other thing of because they have two seasons even though they're technically voting for one they're gonna conflate it mm -hmm. you know they are mm -hmm. so um not not even if like season three weren't dropping in june like it's still gonna win. <laughs> you know yeah so, um yeah like i think like like i said last week i i i'm worried that hacks will just be like very like i don't expect it to win series but I am worried it'll just be like there. You'll come back after a hiatus and it'll get the nominations, but it won't win anything above the line. Bummer. Because it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I think, like, there is a world where, like, Gene Smart and Hannah Einbinder could win. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I we, we We know what they do when they love a show. So it's just, like, straight down the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> love this show and abbott i feel like is also like much better this season than last uh, we I almost i i tolerated abbott last season i thought it was perfectly fine but this season i find it like actually funny and good yeah i think season three is stronger than season two as well and my theory tell is me. tell me well as we know season one was a, a mid-season replacement Yes. Um, it, it had a special premiere in December 2021, and then it aired the other 12 episodes um, starting in January. So that was only 13 episodes. Season two, they had a full season of TV, 22 episodes, mm -hmm. just like the old days. And this season, because of the strikes, they're only doing 14, right? right. So basically like season one. And I have I felt this way last year, like watching season two and just kind of in general. Um, but I feel like modern TV writing because of how we just have fewer episodes. Um, a lot of shows don't know how to write longer seasons. And I feel like Abbott kind of struggled last year trying to arc out story points for 22 episodes. Like Leslie Odom Jr.'s character, it was just like, they brought him back randomly at the end. It's like, a completely dropped thread like from the beginning of the season and then it's like oh yeah we should like tie this up and <laughs> bring him back it was like it was a a lot bumpier last year i felt like but i think now because of the strikes they they get to do a shorter season and this is like what they're used to basically and 
like they you know people talk about filler episodes as if they're bad things and like they're good things like they're fun episodes and sometimes they're the most memorable and fan fave episodes you know and it's also good for like burgeoning writers to like develop characters but i think like modern tv writing it's like filler is bad we need to be Mm -hmm. plot all the time Mm -hmm. you know but i do think like the season is stronger and they're they i i think like the the flash forward and like janine having a different job in the district is good for it too it's just like something different you know different like engine to it even though like you know she'll eventually come back to the school (laughs) yes i've enjoyed it a lot i think it's so funny like quinta won for season two and will most likely not win for season three based on Jean Smart and Iowa Debris being in the category in front of her. And yet, I'm again, I think she's better this season than she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she I think won. she's way better this season than season two. Like, she's had more to do. Uh, and just a lot of fun. And while I'm sure the bear is going to dominate the guest category and probably hacks as well with their, their starry guest stars, uh, I feel like I'm really pulling for Bradley Cooper to get in, Joyce. Can he I get don't in think for he will, seat? but we'll remember the new rule. The What's new guest rule? rule. The John Bernthal rule. Yes. So you don't think he's got enough to do it? I mean, he was in you it need for like to three be minutes. In, you need to be in at least 5% of the episode. Bradley Cooper was in there for like 90 seconds. It was just a cold open. So not going to work. Everyone's forgetting about the new rule. They, they, people were saying this after ScarJo's um, SNL appearance. Mm-hmm. It's like same thing. Like, guys, like, she could get in if she hosts this episode and does Katie Britt again, but she was just in the cold open for, like, five minutes. It's a 90-minute episode. Not 5%. It's a bummer. Rule, guys. It's a bummer. Also, I don't, I also don't think he would win anyway, even if he it were eligible. Be. Yeah. So, but I guess he would, he would complete his EGOT nominations because he has the other ones. And it is funny that the only one he's won is a Grammy. <laughs> he is uh great on the show though on average it was a fun cameo it was really like they've, they've had a lot of guest stars mm-hmm. and cameos this season abbott quite good uh what else here joyce want to do act we i'm in the category i i gotta say for actress i i copied you and i stuck my rudolph in why Wow. Well, I'm doing a loot panel tonight. We're doing this on Wednesday. So that's really why, not because of me. It's partially because of you, but also, yeah. Loot, season two is great. I like, I actually like, I listened to what you say and I was like, oh, uh, your reasoning for her getting in being uh, the idea that they're going to, in a year where, just in general, where there's not a lot of like old favorites that would just dominate the categories, they'll revert to people they just like and have nominated and have won. I think that's like really sound logic for, for a lot of these categories because- They've literally done this in this category. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like and also there's just too to much, pay. there's just too much stuff, right? So it just is like, oh, well, they'll just go with the things they're familiar with, even if they don't love the show or aren't even that familiar with the show, right? Like she's very, fun. it's a great show. She's very funny. But again, it has the, maybe a visibility problem. If this was on Netflix, I'm sure would be much uh, higher viewed, right? Like that kind of thing. So- yeah, no, but I but like like I said, like I think it helps that it's not a new show, right? Like right. this is going to be season two, so people could have caught up in the mm-hmm. past two years because season one aired in twenty twenty two, right? You know, yeah, so, so I threw her in. Yeah, I mean, I still have Selena in there. I know you have Kristen because you you can't drop her. I'll tell you what. One thing I will say about this, and so I had this panel for for Palm Royale at SAG. It was like the SAG Theater. Very nice. Uh, and it was Kristen Wiig and Abe Sylvia, Mindy Cohen, Josh Lucas, and uh, Leslie Bibb. And Leslie Bibb was adamant uh, so much, uh, uh, that uh, Kristen would should get an Emmy nomination. She was like, they better nominate you for a fucking Emmy. That was, I think, the quote. Is she, is she running her campaign? She might as well be. Uh, and the crowd really, the, the SAG crowd was very receptive to that idea. And so I was just like, I think there's enough. She's A, the whole show. The thing I like about her performance on the show is even if you're like lukewarm on the show, it's like she does get to do a million different things on it. And I wonder if that helps. Like it's like drama and it's comedy. It's also physical comedy. It gets pretty silly in certain episodes and she kind of handles it all really well. So I think she would get into, but I don't know. So um, I don't have Selena in is the end. end I know. And it's, 
you know, what a what a turn of events because last year you were all in on Selena and the Selenators were huge fans of you. They were. And now this year they're going to be Look hunting me. Look at this. It's going to be gonna like Rachel me down. in Austin with us. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to hunt me down. I'm going to get a Rachel email about how much uh, how much this is bad. Um, I mean, I think Kristen can get in even if the show doesn't get in just under the same auspice as Maya getting in as a familiar mm-hmm. phase like she is uh, a nine time nominee mm-hmm. right and she, and she's also never won unlike Maya who just can't stop winning now um so it's like you know someone they know and they've nominated before and um and so I think it, yeah, it's like we get they they did that with AD Bryant with Shrill, mm-hmm. right? Like they've nominated AD Bryant for Shrill, and then they or or for SNL rather. And then when they had to fill out this category three years ago, it was like, oh, we'll just chuck her off for Shrill, I guess. I so I think that helps Kristen. Um, but I think like you know again like this is this is the year for Selena to get in, and it's like I don't. I don't think like people are not voting for her. Like she could just be missing. Right. Right. And now that the category has high turnover because Quinta is the only one who can get back in, but yeah, sure. Three spots are locked with Jean and um, Io. And so it's two left. So it's like, they could do a a former nominee or winner in like Maya or, or Kristen um, but I think Selena has the edge in that her show is already established as an Emmy winning show, right? Like her show is definitely getting into series. Definitely. Too. And so it's like, she also has a familiarity with voters. It's just like, she just hasn't been nominated for acting. Right. Nominees for producer. Do you think yeah. like, I guess the, 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 the devil's advocate or the, the counter to that would be like, if you're filling out your ballot, you've never nominated Selena before, right? Let's say, would you actually, and, and you know, you like Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig, would you not, would you like, will people just be like, oh, I guess I can nominate Selena now, or you not even really think of it because you haven't done it? I don't it. think they, I think this is, again, I think this is the stuff that like fans think about when they're overanalyzing this stuff. I think voters are just like, I like this person on this show, I'm voting for them. I don't think they're, you know, put off by their favorite having not gone in the past two years. Right. I think it would just make them want to nominate them again more. I, get, I, guess I don't the- know. Like, I, I mean, like if, if I were like a Selena stan and I've been voting for the past two years, I don't feel like, and I loved her in season three. I don't feel like I would just give up and not vote for her, especially if I'm not passionate about four or five other people. Right. I guess that's so. true. I'll say this. I'm not going to predict her. Maybe that's good for the Selenators because then she'll get in maybe, right? Like if I don't. I don't even... It's like it's like me and Ray Seahorn. I, yeah. I, I predict her every year and then I stopped and then she finally got in. And then for win here, again, who cares at this point? But I, I still have I, I, I have I own first and Gene in second now. But I'm not sure I believe that. And I guess we'll see. Um, I don't know who I might still have Gene in first, but I mean it doesn't matter. I think what you said about the Barry thing could be very real. Mm-hmm. But also, like the show is great and is better than it's been, even right. Like I thought, like season one was great, season two I thought was hit and miss, and then the finale was great, and then season three I think has the potential to be as good as season one, if not better. But maybe that doesn't matter because like they're already moved on. I don't know. I, I feel like if this were the tape system, I feel like Jean is going to have a killer tape no matter what. Right. Like sight unseen. And I feel like if this were the tape system, she would win again. But under this popular vote system, like the whole branch voting, I'm not so sure with Io here. What do you think Io will pick for her submission? Or not that it matters, but like as she's got good stuff in season two. I guess I'm thinking like, we don't actually the thing we don't know is like how great will season three of the bear be and, and they're like, gonna like conflate it again so and they're gonna like, be voting on season three even though it's for season two yeah and so maybe she ends up just having a dominant like season as well and kind of goes all the way like that it's no question when we get down to like voting here who's gonna win 
but that's um, what I mean, she has like several options. Like she could do omelet. Yeah, that's probably. Or she, she could do the finale too. Like, finale or omelet, either one of those would be really um, good. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of Sunday because it was there was no way she could have eaten all of Chicago in like six hours. Yeah. Yeah. You were harping on that. It didn't bother me at all. I'm just like no, like unrealistic. And this then is, for this is my issue with the bear. <laughs> <laughs> And then for drama actor, we talked about this. We have the top comedy four. Comedy actor was out of forty and slip. Oh, it was comedy actor. <laughs> I was reading drama at the top. They're all com- these are comedy performances and the bear. I think I I laugh at the bear. I I do have LOLs at the bear. I, the one clip they show with Jeremy dropping the phone. That's a funny clip. They have I mean, again season two. They have a lot of like gags. They have like, gags, but I mean, even even I think someone I don't care where it is categorized, and I think it could qualify as a comedy or a drama. But sure, Jeremy is not uh, the he's not the comedy focus of the show. I would argue. I think you get a lot more comedy from Evan and Io. No, and but like that, that that doesn't bother me. Like I'm just it, saying, like yeah, because not the funny. the actual category name is not best comedy actor, even though that's what we have it here, and that's yeah. what people call it colloquially. It's performance by an actor in a comedy, in a comedy. so you can be deadly serious and still be a great actor yeah. which is jeremy allen white i mean like look what he submitted for season one true future bruce springsteen choice how do you feel about that uh i don't know <laughs> i think he doesn't look like him but i mean i love they're jeremy trying really hard with the side by sides like picking very specific photos to make it seem like yeah they look he, like each other i think he'll be good at it i think he's got like here's what i would say i think he's got the gravitas to play bruce springsteen especially tortured younger bruce springsteen but i don't think he's the like i think 10 years ago you would have been like obviously oscar isaac would play bruce springsteen but he's too old now so like this is fine um why do we have so many like music biopics now? Because they, I think that's because I was thinking about this and it reminds me of like how it, like a lot of horror movies are just like general IP. It's like an automatic hit basically. Yeah, because it's like, it's like you, you want people to go there to hear the bangers, except this is not like the, no. the normie banger is going to be about Nebraska. <laughs> it's just like a recognizable IP. And so like, it's a way for serious filmmakers like Scott Cooper or in like complete unknown, like James Mangle to make a movie that will be widely seen and get like a decent budget for it, but not have to like, but not have to do a, like a super, like a, you know, mainstream studio. It's, it's a new, it's a new superhero. It's like, yeah. this is cause it's, and no one is really gonna knock it. Like people do like, you know, disparage superhero movies. I mean, we're but, like they're approaching where, it the same way. Yeah, <laughs> so. we're living in a world where that Bob Marley movie that I don't think I've spoken to one person about. Like, this may be the first time we've ever even talked about it with our together. Is made like almost two hundred million dollars worldwide, probably. It's a huge hit. Yeah, um, that had Oscar buzz. It did, yeah. but once it moved to February, I don't think it did. Oh yeah, like we we all knew, but no, a, a, an audience fave. We're not we're not talking movies here, but just briefly, I wanted to ask you this: Do you think Complete Unknown, the Bob Dylan movie, will come out this year? Um, it it could. It depends on when it wraps. Like, I don't think that needs a lot of post. Um, Probably not. But I just like every time, every, every subsequent photo I see of him, Timmy, I'm just like, you're just playing Dominic Sessa playing Bob Dylan. <laughs> I'll believe. It. I'll I'll hold out hope that it's going to be good, but. I was wondering, I was like, I could actually see them rushing it out for this year and or not rushing it, but like getting it, accelerating the pace to get it out for this year. I mean, they, that feels like the type of movie that could just have like a 30 day shoot. I'm sure yeah. it will have a very quick shoot, yeah. shoot and then it'll be over by like April or May and then have a couple of months in post. And then all of a sudden it's like at Telluride. Uh, anyway, Jeremy Allen White, Emmy winner, and probably another Emmy here. And then I, 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 I don't know if I had this last week. I think maybe we did. I have Defaro Unatai in there for Reservation Dogs. I think I did. And I'm sticking with him for now. Did you have I was Kelsey? Like, I might have had Kelsey. You had right? Kelsey because I said okay. that you had a bunch of old dudes and Jeremy was your only young guy. Okay. So I had Kelsey. I took out Kelsey for Defaro because I have the Reservation Dogs in series. And I was just like... Maybe Kelsey, maybe the sure, or like Jarrell Jerome, but I was like, is anybody still talking about that show? 
So I went tomorrow for now. This is another one where it feels like there's four definites and then God bless. You have Theo James still, I'd imagine. I mean, why why would I drop him? Number one fan, number one gentleman no. fan, Joyce. This this is like what what if I just never finished a show? <laughs> This is going to be my thing. I'm just going to go down with it and never finish. I'm reticent to suggest that it will get Oscar. I'm like, when has a Guy Ritchie thing has ever been seriously considered for like any kind of Oh, never. But I'm just like, who else am I going to put in here? Tomorrow I want to die. Kelsey Grammer. Why? It doesn't need, like, here's the thing. (laughs) That a show that gets into series, we know does not need to get acting nominations. No, no, of course. But what if it did? Yeah. I mean, you go with God, predict whoever you want. I'm not stopping you. I'm just saying <laughs> a, a show that gets into series that does not need acting nominations, back it up. It could be carried by other branches. And also it's different competition levels in each category. So yeah. it doesn't guarantee. And it's the same thing, vice versa. You know, like Poker Face did not get into series last year. And Natasha I know. Leon got I, in. I guess you could argue so. that they're familiar with Theo because of White Lotus, right? And like. Yeah, like he's a past nominee and also just the visibility of the show. And the whole Kelsey thing, it's like, sure, he's Frasier. But it's also like, he last won literally 20 years ago. Yeah, I'm not sure there's a lot of, we're talking about visibility of shows. It has the name recognition, but a a lot of people... Is this, a, is this the thing that people are really considering seriously in 2024? I think that I think people are just seeing like the the IP of Frasier and like Kelsey, and I'm just like, it's it's like it's a different academy now than it was yeah. 20 well, years. Well, that's ago. why I'm not going to put him in, but I'll have Defaro in there. I think for a little bit, and then later I'll begrudgingly go to Theo James when you're. I have to admit you're right. <laughs> I mean, we you know Steve Martin back in. I mean, if 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 he doesn't make it back in, then if he doesn't make it back it's in, it's worse they, than Selena missing. Again. If he doesn't make it back in, did they only have two nominees in the category? What is going? Like, do they cut it down? Can they do that? But like him missing last year is also why I I feel like Selena has a chance this year because it's like it's it's not only just her of the main cast missing. You know, it's like he also missed last year. So it's not like they're like singling her out, you know, and like not nominating her. No. Uh, we could just want to go to supporting. Meryl's still in first there. We already talked about this last week and how neither of us thinks she's winning. Love Meryl, but. I have Hannah in first and I'm just like, is that really going to be where, ha- I, I guess I was just like, I would love for Hacks to win. And Hannah's obviously like a co-lead. So it's like not category fraud, but like she's got a more substantial part than any of the other people in this category um but like if they're off on hacks or they're like so in love with the bear does she actually even win i guess we'll figure that out eventually but i don't know i mean like i said last week i i worry that she will never win for this role like i want her to win but i don't know um again in keeping with the abbott's better this season than last season cheryl's been killing it this season and could easily win i would say so I don't, I feel like we talked about this last season with Hannah Waddingham. It's like, will they go back? Exactly. Once they go off of you. I, and. I don't know. I, I also feel like, again, I love Abbott season three. But I, I, I feel like, is, is it also at that age of a show? Like, it's not old. It's only in its third year. But that's like, I mean, I guess that's old for a lot of shows now. Because a lot of shows end after two seasons. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like middle age right now and it, you, you know clearly it's not the most popular show in comedy right we know that right for sure and it it won awards while it could right so it won like two, yeah. two years ago it won for cheryl and writing um and casting like great wins and then io or not io quinta won last year um for lead actress um in the absence of gene and also because io went supporting Mm -hmm. for season one of the bear like i don't think she would have won had io gone lead for season one you know probably not so with abbott i think you're exact i think it's been in the way it's won has been very opportunistic right Or, or wins where it like can 
And I think it shows that, like you're saying, like we have like pretty, I don't know, like it, it, not irrefutable, but like a lot of data points and proof that the industry doesn't love the show as much as people online love the show. And that said, I do think they think it's fine and when, or like good enough, right? You know what I mean? Not as like not to be like mean, but it seems like there it has won in places where it could win. And mm-hmm. when there's been a lack of other, like you said, like Quinta winning best act. I think of Io is in that category based on how the bear performed at this year's slash last yeah, year. Yeah, like I mean, she would have just won in lead and then someone else would, would have won, won supporting actress. Right. So I'm like, so now like thinking with, so that's why I'm like, maybe they'll go back to Abbott here just or Cheryl here because like they can, right? Like, and they like, even like maybe it's different than like, I understand what we've, we've seen historically. They're not going to backtrack on like, for Hannah Waddingham or, or Rachel Brosnahan or whatever it's been, but that's because there has been other like either new things there that are exciting or like dominant shows. So I'm like in lieu of a dominant, like Meryl would be new, I guess here. And like some of the, the bear supporting actresses would be new, but again, barring like some shocking season three episodes, which who knows, like I could see Liza winning, right. If there's like a great arc for her in season three, I, I would have a harder time seeing Abby winning based on the character. And I have Molly in there, but I don't think she's like, I'm not expecting that to like, I mean, I guess they could go like to me that lonely, like the, there's only like three realistic winners here, barring Liza having a big season three bear episode would be Hannah, Cheryl and Meryl. And I guess Meryl would be like the newcomer to this that could win. And certainly was great on only murders. But I also was like, I just don't believe that she'll win, but maybe that's like trying to talk myself out of the very obvious fact that she's Meryl Streep and will win. I I just don't feel like she'd win either. Like I think she'll get in and um, I don't know. I, 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 I feel like she'd, she'd have a better shot if she were guest eligible. Certainly would. I actually think she would win for guest, but she's on it too much. Yeah. Like she's not eligible for guest. And I, I feel like, you know, because she's Meryl Streep, people just automatically predict her and expect her to win. Definitely. So I th- I felt like th- it was the same thing at the Globes. Um, and she was predicting to win the Globe. And I was like, no, they're going to go with Elizabeth Debicki. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, count on it. Um, and it, I, I mean, like, granted, season two of Big Little Lies was not the best. But when she was cast, everyone was like, Emmy for Meryl. You know, mm-hmm. like, she got nominated. But it, you know, I I think like if if that season had been just you know better received, like sh- she would have been a popular prediction to win too. Right. Um. But I don't think she would win here. And yeah, they could go back in the absence of, you know, a strong front runner to Cheryl. Um. I love how you didn't mention Janelle James when she was the one that two years ago we were all like she's the scene stealer like she would win of the abbott supporting ladies and now it it feels like her window was also closing i feel like her window i think for her she could have won for the first season and i think she had the best stuff in the first season and she's still really funny but i just don't believe that with the with cheryl there it just seems hard to imagine she would actually win over cheryl on the same show you know what i mean like i'm just like then i can't really take her seriously to win yeah like i think the the abbott fans hopes is like like they could pull a west wing with it and just like hit everyone eventually you know but i I mean that just seems i don't think so and yeah like i do think her best shot to win was in season one and (laughs) it's it's interesting because like she hasn't won anything anywhere you know, like even Tyler James Williams has right. won the Globe and Cheryl has won Critics Choice as well. This so, is no disrespect to Janelle James. Who is no, I think she's great. But I just don't um, think she would win. Do you, who do you have in your seventh spot then? I forgot. Do you have Lisa Ann Walter? Yes. She's having a great season as well. I am reticent to predict her because I really think she should have just gotten in for last season. And the fact that she didn't, still is like kind of surprising to me yeah like jessica williams got in over her so that's kind of why i'm going because she was like prize you know right that's why i'm going molly gordon because i'm just like i think they're just going to go down the line for the bear yeah i could see 
Molly getting in. Um, I I don't know, because I feel like they're kind of the same, too. In a way. Yeah. So. And it's then, like, who's going to get the extra supporting right. actress in here? And then, I don't know. There's like, I mean, Alice and Janney's in seventh. Well, all the Palm Royale ladies, Alice and Janney, Cara Burnett. And Laura Dern. Cara Burnett to me is a lot like Meryl in that she's mm-hmm. too, too much to be a guest star and would probably win guest, but is here as a contender. She's super, super funny as it gets down to the end, right? Like, I mean, she, she's right now. Well, she's think, in, a, in a coma. For she's in a the, coma for many episodes for here at the beginning. Uh, and then is going to come back. Uh, and Allison Janney is great, but I just was like, like I mean, I guess it could be like shrinking style and get the actors in, right? And like Alice William, uh, and Alice and Janney would be like an easy person to put in here. Um, would love to see it. I just don't have it right now. I just think there's too many because the bear has too many options. I feel like that's going to edge out some of these other shows. Um, is Leslie Bibb even in here? Let's Kristen see. Wiggs, campaign manager. I'm I'm scrolling. I'm just controlling find. She's not. But if she were, I think she'd have the best shot of anybody. I'm shocked she's not in it yet. I'm sure that'll be rectified eventually. Would you predict her if she's in here? I wouldn't, but I would predict her over Allison. She's definitely got the most material and she's really, really funny. Her character kind of fades towards the end of the season, but not really. I don't know. I, I think she would get in. And she's already got the, uh, she's already on the trail. Did you see there was a nice Vanity Fair piece about her uh, recently. Yeah, and she's she's pulling the Jamie Lee Curtis like yeah. she's championing her lead she's actress, manifesting herself yeah. basically. You know, I would I would be totally fine with a nomination for her because uh, I loved Popular. So yeah, that's one of the things I love about the show. I kind of asked, uh, hum- like Pat, did you talk about Popular? Well, I meant somebody shouted out Popular. I think from the crowd, but I it mentioned wasn't me. it, it wasn't you. You weren't there. Uh, but I mentioned in terms of like the cast of the show, I found like like it's really cool because you got Carol Burnett. And you have like, obviously, like everyone on the show has got like a massive, like very recognizable show from their past, basically. Like Mindy Cohen is in it, right? From Facts of Life. You have Allison Janney, obviously West Wing. But Leslie Bibb, popular, I thought. Like, and it feels like almost like an event. It's like an all-star team of like actors coming together for this show. And I just found that really interesting. And I was like wondering if it was intentional in terms of like trying to source actors from every era. Like Julia yeah, Duffy's like on it from Julia New Heart. Yeah. Right. She's so good on it too not listed here but i feel like all these actors are really great and all very from very recognizable shows that people loved in the past and yeah and then laura like, laura also got her pops on bruce stern right so, so, so he was basically ricky martin he was basically <laughs> like one because it, it was laura Dern was supposed to actually be in it and like was gonna start yeah and she's like she, she talked about this at, at tca laura Dern also did a great job moderating the yeah. panel she there. i didn't get like, to talk she's to such her. a pro so she probably could have done a better job than me. But anyway, they were all like, uh, they were, he was like, once you have like Laura Dern involved, like everybody just kind of like, like as a self-fulfilling prophecy of like how do you cast the show basically? Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause she's, she's an EP on the show. Right. And like once other people come on, it's like, oh, I want to be on this show basically. Like it was easier to get Carol Burnett on when it's like, oh, here's Allison Janney and Kristen Wiig and Laura Dern basically. Do you think like they got Josh Lucas because of Sweet Home Alabama that Laura just hit up Reese? Possibly. He's great too. I I could of all these actors like Leslie, but we can't. I would say she'd have the most realistic shot, um, but I don't think I don't think any of them will get it because I think there's too many of them. So yeah, and like then, this this could easily be um, like multiple Abbott bears and then Hannah, right? And Meryl and Meryl. That's what I have. I think that's what it's going to be. I'm just going based on like history how they don't really like to branch out a lot of times when they don't have to. They don't need. Yeah, like don't. we we thought last year with the restricted ballot, there'll be more variety in the nominees, and it was like, no, we're still going to nominate the actors from our favorite shows, Succession yes. and The White Lotus. Yes, and I think that's when you see here with the Bear and Abbott is going to be like, well, check, 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 check. I mean, I actually thought, I mean, I think more than like Leslie, if I was going to pick a non, like Molly person here, I would probably have uh, Meg Stalter from Hacks. We, we both really wanted her and PWD to get in last time, and they didn't. So I have PWD in here for comedy supporting actor, but I, I could see her getting in for supporting actress too. I mean, like, but I just, like we said, I'm not sure 
Will they embrace re-embrace hacks and like kind of like or will they? It was weird with hats with season two because it went down in nominations for Mm -hmm. its regular cast because Carl Clemens Hopkins didn't get in, um, but then it just blew up with its guest stars. Right, and that could happen again this year because they have many. So we'll see because they're competing with the Bear. Who's gonna start the the campaign for Christina Hendricks to win her Emmy? Mm, Probably somebody, not us, Uh, not me at least. Uh, and then for supporting actor, I think we have the same seven because we don't have Paul Rudd. Mine are Evan, Oliver, Vlad, Maddie Matheson, Lionel Boyce, Carl Clements Hoskins, Tyler James Williams, and then Paul W. Downs. No Paul Rudd. No, the other Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I can see PWD missing because no guarantee he'll get in. No. Uh, None at all, but he and I can I can hope. see like I, I I really can't see them just being lazy and going back to SNL too. I'm not predicting it, but I can see that happening. Would you say there's a better shot of Bowen Yang getting or Chris Perfetti adding for Abbott? Um, I I don't know since I already have Lisa. I don't know if they would both get in. I feel like that's like too much. Maybe if I didn't have Lisa, I could see Chris. I know they don't think this way, but I think it'll be like kind of weird because we also expected Abbott to blow up in season two with acting mm-hmm. nominations and it didn't. Um. So, but, but, you know, just going back to my theory that they'll just, if, if they're not, if they're just apathetic about other people and shows, they'll, they'll just go with familiarity and that's Bowen, I guess. Right. I mean, I feel like Paul is a hope diction for me. I'm just going to leave him there until it manifests, but I'm not super confident in it. The other six, I actually am. Even Maddie, who is not necessarily being seriously considered, it seems. He is he in the top seven? I think he is. Oh, he's in the top. I think he's seven now. Um. Well, I mean, like, what? Because we lost a spot last year. Because it it was eight two years ago, and we lost a spot last year, and then Tony Shaloub missed, and you called it. I did. That was one of my. I'm good at calling the snubs because I just could tell when this, people again. Don't I, like like I said, I feel like we should get um credit for I calling think, snubs. I think we should. I just know when there's no enthusiasm for these things. It seems. It's, um, it's like, it's like it. You know, it's like fine to get the correct predictions, like that people get it right, but it the the context matters too. Of like. So you're saying if this goes back to eight. If it goes back to eight, I don't know if it would, but if it does. So it goes back to eight. I guess I would add Paul just for name recognition, Paul Rudd. And if it went to eight for supporting actress, I would probably add Lisa because of Abbott. Yeah. Um. So you would you wouldn't go to SNL if it's I just wouldn't go. I don't feel like there is a single se- single part of the season that has really br- blown up no. in the consciousness. I mean, you for- you know, I don't watch that show. But in, oh. <laughs> in the culture, the only thing I've seen is Scarlett Johansson is, as the, the RNC response. And I already, Katie Britt, was that her name? I already forgot her name. I think it was Katie Britt. Um, so no disrespect to Bowen. I think he's going to be more focused on the Wicked promo than Emmy's promo this year, maybe. Jason, that was uh, our, anything else here? Anybody else? For supporting actor? Ricky Martin for Palm Royale. Josh Lucas, like you mentioned. Um, I, I have seen people really like Marcelo Hernandez from SNL, but I don't, I feel I've like if they're going to do SNL, they'll, they'll do like Bowen. Or I think Keenan they would just go back to somebody they knew, right? Yeah. I would want to give a shout out to Joel Kim Booster for loot is absolutely hilarious. And if Maya is getting in, there's an, at least an outside shot he would get in because he's going to be in, he's almost every scene with her. Um, I just want to mention Giancarlo Esposito from The Gentleman. Yes, because because when it was a drama, I did have him in my drama supporting actor lineup just because I had to fill out the spots. And I'm like, it's John Carlo. Sure. Why not? I don't have him in here because it's more crowded here in comedy. Right. But would not be surprised. Uh, Choice we could do emails, I guess. What do you think? You guess. We got a lot of emails. About about the Emmys? <laughs> and about, about the Emmys, yeah. We got a lot. I'm going to start with, let's see. 
This one's from Brad. Email us at slugfest at goldderby.com. You're gonna, I think you're gonna like at least some of this one, Joyce. I feel like and pick this one out. I was like, let's start with this one. I think Joyce will be into it. Hi, Joyce and Chris. When you did your Emmy predictions episode last week, you didn't mention Bridgerton at all. I know it missed the series nomination for its second season, but aside from The Crown, it is the only previously nominated series that will have new episodes in this cycle. Are you not considering Bridgerton because it missed the last time it was eligible, or is it even eligible for series this cycle? The Netflix re release strategy for this season is so weird, since four episodes will premiere in May and then four more in June. Is it eligible for series if only four episodes premiere before June 1st? By the way, I'm not really that big of a fan of Bridgerton. I'm just baffled by this. Personally, I'm pulling for the Gilded Age to make a good showing. On a side note, how does Joyce feel about the resurgence of the blue sky era of television with the reboot of Suits and even something like Lincoln Lawyer which seems like it's right out of that time. Thanks, Brad. Um, I love the blue sky era. So it's just, <laughs> but you know, like, um, I just have issue when, when like the things I like get like too popular. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Of it's course. like when you're a fan of like an indie band and then you get too big. Sure. It's like not as fun. Cause now like, you know, like everyone is finally on my level with suits which I cover from the beginning when it premiered on June 23rd, mm -hmm. 2011. So not that you have the date remember, circled or anything. No, not at all. So, um, but I, I do love that, you know, like a lot of, I think a lot of the, the USA blue sky titles have been doing well in streaming like Royal pains. And again, it's like people like having episodes to watch. So I'm of two minds at this. I think, Maybe there's like a moderation that's good. Cause I'm like, I, I think you're right that I like, I, I do miss certain shows being like 20 episodes, right? 22 episodes and having that like full season. And I think that is a specific skill set that is lost. But I also miss like just a great 10 to 13 episode season, like we saw from a lot of the cable shows, you know, that were awesome, like Mad Men or Sopranos or anything like that. And now I feel like we're just in a spot where. We're not getting great. Too many eight episode shows, and, and none, like, nothing is good. Is no, that <laughs> no? There, there were. It also bothers me that people continue to call where we are right now peak TV because it's not peak TV is over. We're in mass TV. Like peak TV was ten years ago, basically. We're in mass TV. That was that was when what you were talking about. Like we still had um, broadcast shows, like you know, full seasons yeah. and even like sixteen to twenty episodes. You know, for some like basic cable shows too, like the USA shows. And, and yeah, we still had like, like the Mad Men's and the Breaking Bads with like 13 episode seasons, yeah. you know, and they were all good. <laughs> I think peak TV ended with succession finale because I'm like, there's no, like not, I know we're like in the tank for that, but I'm like, that is the last show that I would say is great. And that was like great in a way that would have been comfortable airing in 2010. Yeah. I mean, it ended way before that, but yeah, it's, uh. <laughs> What did you do to mark the one-year anniversary of the final season premiere yesterday? I seriously considered buying uh, Succession Funko Pops. This is true. I haven't done it yet, but they came out with a series of Succession Funko vinyl pops. And uh, they have- But which Kendall, ones? Well, Kendall for sure. And then probably, I mean, I kind of wanted all of them. I was disappointed though. Again, no, no respect shown to Connor. They've only made Logan, Kendall, Shiv, Roman, and Cousin Greg. He's- He's the eldest son. Where's Tom? He's CEO. How the fuck is Tom not a pop? With his prison who, wine? Who made this executive decision? Get fun Funko. Get, get Funko on the horns and uh, let me know. Uh, um, but no, I was serious. That's how I thought. I was like, should I spend money on these stupid toys that my daughter will end up just co-opting and not i will never get to actually look at well you could just not take them out of the box but that's not that's not a real thing but i had i had a funko in a box that was steve from stranger things when he worked at scoops ahoy and uh, that's gone now it's in the box i also have pearl jam funko i don't even of collect these did. but they had like a whole set of them that's in a box and i had the box out and now i hid the box so now i just have it in the basement in a storage box to keep it away from my daughter. And I was like, this is stupid. She should be allowed to play with toys. So that's why I'm probably not going to buy it. The long way to say I'm not going to buy the succession pops, but I thought about it. I was, I was gonna, I had to watch other things last night, but I seriously consider like, what if I continue my rewatch? Cause I started rewatching succession in January and 
I'm up to too much birthday. Not no disrespect to anything that's nothing, nothing, not no disrespect to any of the new shows. Not a single one, not even Shogun can hold a candle to succession. No, even though Shogun is succession. A fantastic it's, show. It's every succession. Esque. Love it. Love it. So um, much. But no, yeah, I, I, I think, I think also the thing is we need, we need more middle TV, which is what USA was really good at yeah. with um, Blue Skies. Because I think people tried, they veer too much into trying to do prestige. Everything is prestige now. Yeah, they, they nothing it's is like a lot of wannabe prestige. And then there's just a lot of just content in general. And a lot is bad. <laughs> I think most of it is bad. But I will say, I think we're back in this, like, we we talked about this offline. But I know you were heartened by the, the Noah Wiley show that Max is going to do. My which, ER reunion. Which felt like a real shot across the bow of, Here's a regular ass show. It's 15 episodes. It's about like when, when was the last time you heard 15 episodes? I couldn't even believe it. I was like, this is not a eight. crazy right. It's not eight, it's not ten. It's just a regular ass show. Noah Wiley doing like a TNT series on Max. Which he's done before. Yes. But it's basically Dr. Carter moving to Pittsburgh. <laughs> and I was like, this is like a sign that maybe we're getting back to just stuff people want to watch. I think that's what they're trying to do too. Like, you know, like the BBC acquired suits yeah this week too so but then it's like can you actually produce this stuff too like obviously we have the the suit spinoff coming as well this is a huge issue i found not again we're not talking movies but i watched the roadhouse uh, the new roadhouse this week oh i did too yes boy i thought it was pretty bad and i was like fully in the tank it and i was like this has the veneer of a real movie and like it's like trying to be like a channel 11 movie but doesn't actually can't succeed at doing it and i feel like with a lot of the tv you're seeing like i'm hoping the execution on the no like there's a we know what that noah wiley show would be like if it was like 2002 right and i'm like are you able to actually execute on that or is it like going to be a failed version of trying to execute on that well the good thing is like it it's literally an er reunion i know like, i know i'm just well, saying like that's my concern with a lot of like the shows that are going back to like regular shows that people want to watch is sometimes I think they just miss the mark because they're trying too hard. Yeah, I think that's that's a lot to do with it too. And then like, you know, we've we've had just reduced and shortened seasons for so long. Yeah. Then it's like you have to get the writing filler episodes, right? Mm-hmm. Like got to do those, you know, like can you do those or just like focus on another character that's not the lead or something that's not plot heavy. Right. But I mean, like yeah, I I, I think we'll we'd be seeing I think like Netflix can do stuff like that, but again, they have so much stuff and it gets lost so easily. Right. Too. I think they've yeah, they've had success with like Night Agent, like Yeah, like like Diplomat. It was like Diplomat. I mean when I watched both of those last year, I was like, these feel like Fox and ABC shows yeah. from like twenty twelve. And Lincoln Lawyer, like mentioned in that email. Yeah. Uh, Joyce, this one's oh. from JJ. Oh no, we didn't answer the Bridgerton thing. Um, oh. because they're not they're not submitting it, so that's why. <laughs> that's go. that's it. <laughs> and and end of sense. Yeah. Uh, this one is from JJ. Email us at slugfest at goldderby.com. Hi, Joyce and Chris, longtime listener, novice writer. My question is about comedy actress race, which is hurting my head. I have the top three: Io, Jean, and Quinta, and then Selena and Kristen. What I'm worried about is Selena missing again. I'm a fan of her performance on the show and her missing for season two made more sense, even though I think she was incredible in season two, given the loss of a slot and the time it had been since season two had aired. But she she really shouldn't have missed for season one. I do think she makes it this year, given the visibility of only murders, the fact that she had much more comedic performance this time around, which had a positive, which had positive viral moments. And the fact that the show is locked for three acting nominations in the lead supporting categories. My other reason is I feel like the Maya and that Maya and Kristen could potentially split the SNL Apple vote now that we are back to a restricted ballot and Selena gets in just because voters are torn on who to go for and Selena is the co-lead of a top four well-seen show. What do you both both think? I just can't see her missing this year, but I also know that if she does, then it's goodbye for an acting nomination for the show, which would be a huge shame. Regards, JJ. A Selenator. A Selenator with some very a lot of stuff we talked about there. Yeah. I mean, again, I think if she doesn't get in, then like she's probably never getting into the show this year. Yeah. You know, um, it's kind of like now or never mm-hmm. or here. Um, I I'm not 
surprised she missed for the first season are you i'm sure i had her in for the first season but i guess i can't say in hindsight i'm surprised i like i'm i'm just not surprised because i feel like i mean that year was kind of competitive too because it was gene who won um rachel brosnahan like she was always getting in you know um quinta that was the first year of abbott kaylee cuoco um who was nominated a year before for flight attendant uh al fanning for the great and Issa ray for insecure also a former nominee so i guess you could say she should have gone in over l yeah maybe but I think sometimes, like, you know, first year shows, they they don't max out. And that's when you kind of expect them to in season two. It, it, again, I say this with the utmost respect to Selenators out there. I guess my biggest problem with my biggest blocker of predicting her right now is I think she's always been good on the show. But I don't think there was anything in the third season that felt better than the second or first season. And the fact that maybe this doesn't matter because, like we said, there's less competition, certainly. But I was just like, there's nothing that she did in the third season that was like, oh, now I get it. You know what I mean? If you haven't been on the performance and on her sense of humor since the first season, like nothing in the third season would change that. And I'm just wondering if they're just like not into what she's doing, basically. I mean, that that could be the case. Yeah, she didn't have a, a tape in season three. Like she had something no. to pieces in season two. Yeah. I mean, she had like that like romance thing with Jesse basically and um i mean she did have her own arc i wish that the girl cop thing went further yeah you know like she she was you know trying to you know she turned 30 and she's trying to do her own thing and she was like moving out and stuff so i think that was like um you know a good setup but i it, it kind of you know they eventually had to get back to the case and everything so whatever but um i so like if the category goes back to six slots like that'll be even better news for her yeah um, if but it if, went back to six i would absolutely have her in but so. it, it if it's like at five like i think she can still do it just because it is like as we know right now it's a stronger show than palm royale which is untested and loot you know the show is stronger but i think we like we said like that christine and my are obviously way stronger as a brand i mean maya for sure like I don't know about Kristen. Like she, you know, like she hasn't won anything. Like she hasn't won, but she's obviously SNL been nominated and, and spoils of Babylon, basically. Right. And um, I mean, like Selena can be like Mandy Moore, who mm -hmm. like she also was snubbed the first two years of This Is Us, and she got in for the third season when no one was predicting her. Right. Um, and that was also a year with almost complete turnover in the category because Sandra O oh was the only person who was eligible to come back which is the same thing here like Quinta is the only one from last year who could come back right. so it, so it's like they could be in the same case where it's like they just were like barely missing and then once the category emptied out like they were able to get in right so this one is from uh, KM who emailed us at slugfestatgoldderby.com. Hi, Joyce and Chris. I would like to get your thoughts on these potential reforms to the Emmy Awards. I, just, I know you're going to have lots of thoughts on this, Joyce. Calendar. I feel like the eligibility calendar that ends in May is outdated with the decline of broadcast television at the Emmys. Do you think a change to January, December would be no, good for the no, Academy? No, no. Hard no, pass. No, no. Uh, category edition. In the drama supporting races last year, the White Lotus in succession had 14 of 16 nominees. Do you think an ensemble award is necessary for more shows to be recognized for acting? No, I know you you love this ensemble stuff and you want an ensemble Oscar. Like, I'm I'm not about that. I think you should. I think it's great. Though it'll no, because up I think like the reason we care about awards is because of the exclusivity. So you can't be inviting I and just hand out participation trophies all the time. I would I disagree with some of that, but I would say the problem with this is that we ha historic having seen how they vote. The problem with this is when you do an ensemble, it wouldn't be for like the cool show that you like. It would just be the same five shows that the, if you did an ensemble, if no cat, no no genre designation at the Emmys, and they did an ensemble, it would, right now it would be last year would have been like White Lotus, the Succession, The Bear, you know, all the same shows. Beef like that one. 
So it wouldn't be like, you wouldn't be getting new shows in there. You'd just be getting another awards for the shows that they already like. I, I mean, I agree about that, but I just don't think like, I don't, I don't think you need to be handing out more awards to actors. Right. <laughs> like well, they're already the ones choice. who are overpraised. They're in most important. Fran, as Fran Drescher said. It's the said, golden age, right? You know, they, they, need, age they need their own individual intros at the Oscars. And they're yeah. the most important. We're the, we're the top of the food chain. Category reshuffle. This is another KM one. No more categorizing by genre. What do you think? Is less more? I realize this is probably the most unlikely of these because of the sheer number of shows. But if you told me the Bear and Barry were competing in drama, I would be fine with it. Or if the White Lotus was in comedy. Once again, I mentioned the decline of broadcast television. You can pack a pretty hefty dramatic punch that runs 26 minutes or a laugh riot that clocks in at 57 minutes. Thanks for reading. Have a good one. Um, I, I mean, in theory, I don't have an issue with genreless categories, but I think in execution, it, it's not going to work out well for comedies because I think people will still favor dramas and, you know, we have comedy, drama and limited and most shows in limited are dramas anyway, you know, it's, it, I like the idea of it too, but I, yeah, I think you're exactly right. I don't know. There's too many shows and like they would prioritize like the same five dramas. Yeah. Right? Like they think they're, they'll be more impressed by dramatic chops. And basically. like, yeah, I just don't, I don't know how you fix that. Like otherwise, I mean, I guess you could do like a length thing or maybe should there be an episode limit? Like if it's less than 10 episodes, it's in one. And best it's best comedy one, series. That's like, I mean, like, that would be that would be interesting if it like, because I, I think what we were saying previously does bear truth, which is that like, it's a lot harder now to do a successful 15, 20 episodes than it is to do a successful 10. Even though people have a tough time even doing successful. I, I mean, eight. I don't think I, I again, I'm, I'm all about fewer categories. So I don't think we need more of like right. the same categories. Right. So I, just, I wish it, there would be a way to make fewer categories, but I actually don't know how you do it. There's too many shows. No, I mean, they've they've like tried. I mean, when they first introduced the guest categories, they were genderless. It was just best guest performer right. in a comedy series or in a drama series. And then they made them gendered. So, I, yeah, like once you do that, like it's it's hard to put the genie back in the bottle because once you've done this, it's like people are not going to like it when you revert it. And it's like less opportunity for them. Uh, you know? This, this email is from Tim. Who's emailed us before. Hi again, Joyce and Chris. This early in the season, and it seems like both drama supporting categories are already locked up for Billy Crudup and Elizabeth Debicki. What do you think about them moving up to the more prestigious lead category? I feel like both of them would have an equally strong chance at winning the lead categories, but maybe Apple would like to keep Billy in supporting so it doesn't hurt Gary Oldman's chances, but I believe it is up to the performers to choose which category they submit in. Kind regards, Tim. Um, I mean, it's up to like all of them. Like they all. Right talk about it so um it, we've kind of toyed with that we discussed it very briefly i think last week if you had a guess if one of them were to move up who would it be billy me too i mean like billy could have already been lead I, so i would not people, be were, people were angling for him to be lead from the beginning i would not be surprised if he's lead for this season certainly based on how the season played out and i think it's very easy to imagine him in lead and then john and supporting right as they do this um, if he were in lead, I actually think he would win, frankly. No offense, no disrespect to Gary. I know we didn't do drama this week, but um yeah, like he's won before. It's it it does feel like it's the type of performance that is like, you know, really flashy and showy that would win in supporting more yes. so than lead. But like lead is open this year, basically. Um, yep. drama actor. And then I've I've seen since the crown season six dropped in november and december um you know not not universally praised but i've seen a lot of push by people uh for elizabeth to go lead mm -hmm. because again like she's like the like she's the best part of the season and basically the only aspect of the season that ha is win competitive you know um which just cracks me up that people are pushing for this because she's only <laughs> in four episodes basically well she's like a ghost later but in like less than half the season and like they want this to happen in lead because lead is league and whereas like last year people were so pissed off 
at Brian Cox going lead for like basically the same thing, like not in the full season, but they just don't like him as much. And they didn't want him to go lead because they wanted their other faves to get in. Right. So very hypocritical, but I don't think she would go lead. I don't think she'll go lead, but I actually think Billy might, especially based on the morning shows, other supporting actors. It's yeah. Like it, it, they, they can just, like he, I mean, I watched this so long ago. I'm like, he definitely is like a lead. I mean, he's not but, a supporting actor on the show. My, 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 my take. He has like he has an episode with his mom. Yeah, he's um, like a main driving force of the season. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean he's he's always been like that. So yeah, but like it, like but it, now but now done. they also have John Ham. Like I mean they had Mark previously too, but yeah. Mark has always been like an actual supporting right and Steve. Character. Yeah, and then with like the crown, I I don't think they would do that. Not just because she's not in the full season, no. but because I think they would want to get Imelda the nomination this time, yes. like because yeah. she missed, yeah, last year, and I don't know if she would win, but it's certainly open, right? Like, it's open up that she could win, but I think she has an easier time winning supporting. Oh, no, I mean, like, Imelda and Lee. Oh, I don't think Imelda's going to win, no. Yeah, like, I don't, but, like, I think they, they do want to get her in. Yeah. I'd be surprised if she doesn't get in. I mean, obviously, now, but. So, I mean, I think if, if Elizabeth were in lead, I think they would both get in, like, her and, and Imelda. But I think with them split, like, you're guaranteed a win in supporting for her, for Elizabeth. Right. And then you could still try to shoot for the lead win right. with Imelda. Instead of just getting one in, in lead. And, or, I mean, I don't even, I, I guess Elizabeth could win lead. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> um, this one's from MJ, who writes Hi, Joyce and Chris. Would you mind explaining the boys' season release strategy? Seems like they drop a full season around the cutoff dates. And if it will be eligible for this year's Emmys, it felt like after getting into series in 21, it would have been able to build on nominations, but only got two tech noms and one win at the 23 awards. Can it get back into series? Does Anthony Starr have any chance in actor? Do you think the show, the Emmys have moved on from the show in the top categories? This is an easy one to answer because it's not eligible, Joyce. It's not eligible because it's dropping June 13th, which is the day voting starts. Right. And the end of eligibility is May 31st. So. So when when year? they announced that, it, I, it was, to me, that was just like, they're just focused mm -hmm. on commercial plays. Yeah. I don't think it's an Emmy show anymore for them. I mean, you know, good for it for getting that nomination three years ago, you know, and I think it, it, it could have gone back in had it been eligible. This like season. this year, I think it would have gotten in, right? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, they because they had wrapped that before the strikes, yeah, and they they just didn't want to schedule it, mm -hmm. or um until the strikes were resolved. So yeah. it was like the assumption that it it would make eligibility, but they just dated it for June. Um. This one's from Callie, who emailed us at slugfest at goldderby.com. Hi, Joyce and Chris. With the recent news that Euphoria Season 3 has been delayed even further, news was in scare quotes, Joyce. When do you think HBO will finally just come out and reveal it's canceled and never coming back? We can read between the lines now, but it seems no one is willing to just say it. I mean, I think that's definitely true. It's like, I wouldn't say canceled. I, I I mean, I guess that's maybe I, I, just not coming back. I don't think it's any like I don't think. It's no, but I think that's that's the whole I, I mean, I feel like they should have just ripped off the bandaid and been like, yes, it's canceled on Monday or just but I, I think like, well, it's the same thing. Like, it's not coming back. But I think right. like the positioning it as a delay will just continue to invite more questions to for everyone involved. But it kind of just reminds me of like mind hunter and bodyguard where they were never officially canceled and it was just like oh like maybe mm -hmm. like it's like delayed and like all this stuff i mean especially bodyguard <laughs> it's just like where's season two it just seems like it's hard to imagine a time with how busy the cast is it seems actually hard to imagine them finding windows to fit this in yeah and it's like it <laughs> Like the, the the their statement too of just like oh we need more, like Sam needs more time to write it and it's like, you, like they they finished season two in twenty twenty one and like yeah I know there was a strike, but it's been three years, 
I mean, I'm sure a lot of it has to do like eight episodes. I I feel like so. I mean, I'm sure it was also like Angus Cloud dying probably through in disarray whatever he had. Yeah, like for sure, and like Barbie leaving, but those were also like Angus died in July. Yeah, you know, and um, so like we we knew about the the time jump after season two aired yes. two years ago so it was kind of being reported as news this week it's like we already knew about this and it's like he clearly had this in mind when season two finished so, I think so. it's like it's been a couple of years and it's it's just yeah i i guess like that they could just do like you know one of their their wrap-up specials or something like I, they did it like during covid but i it's feel like, like that's more likely like probably not with the full cast either like those two specials too because the other thing like before this delay i was just thinking like season three will probably just be like the netflix episodes of arrested development like they can't get they can't coordinate everyone's schedule so people will just be in like two or three episodes and not in scenes with other people absolutely and i think that seems more at this point that seems more believable to me than a full third season like either like a special or like a one-off special or like three episodes where you know we're just spotlighting different yeah, people it, it's just like together. insane because the show premiered in 2019 and it's only aired 16 episodes and um you know like the bear which is filming two seasons back to back now it premiered in 2022 it's gonna have aired four seasons before euphoria airs the third season yes classic so. Uh, this email is from Tim. Hi, Joyce and Chris. People seem to like Netflix's three body problem, or at least claim to like it, despite it being extremely out there. Do you think it can make a late Emmys push into a lackluster race? Uh, I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it yet either. So the merits for both. So no, no, like personal opinion on it. But the early numbers were not great. They're not gentleman numbers. No, what, what can be? I will say this. I've talked to real people who've watched it, though, and they say it's good and it's like fun. And I think that helps it in terms of like positivity, I guess. But I just think it might be too too genre to get in for the Emmys if it's not going to be like a massive, massive hit. Yeah, like I think it would need to be huge, like like actual Game of Thrones. And I think like I I know people who've seen it and you know, some like it and some are just like, what the hell is right. this? And so I think that that there might be a lot of that sentiment too with voters. I, I also am like so I don't think any of the actors would get in, and then you're like basically relying on the whole like the, the crafts, the, the crafts, and, like, and I'm like, maybe are they going to care enough? You know what I mean? Like it just seems like maybe that's not enough to get it in, like at all. So, but I don't actually know what. I mean, there's there's open slots there, so if it ends up popping, it could be something. Uh, this one was from Abel. Email to slugfestgoldderby.com. Hi, Joyce and Chris. Uh, is Palm Royale supposed to be a comedy? I'm a bit baffled by this entire show. I watched it and I agree with Joyce's friend that it's not that funny. I feel like the production design is also trying so hard and still failing to look real, question mark. That's from Abel. Real, question mark. I mean, it. this is your baby. This is your gentleman. I mean, I I reflect, I don't love when people, I hate the, I hate that, is this supposed to be funny? It's like, yeah, dummy, but it might not be your sense of humor, I guess, would be my, my take. No offense to Abel or your friend who said that, but uh, everybody's at a different comedy level, right? So I think it is supposed to be funny, but if you don't find it funny, that's fine. Um, The production design is interesting because I was like, they, they talked a lot about that in my panel, Joyce, and it's like a lot of like very detailed. Was it, was it real, question mark? It is real. And it's like a lot of like the, the costumes and everything was like very well sourced. And obviously they had like a large checkbook from Apple. And they talked about like how in one scene, there's like a, a fish tank, I feel like behind, I think it's maybe in the pawn shop or whatever. And I, but I, and I forget even what episode, but there was like a fish tank that they needed. They found like specific right colors of fish. You know what I mean? Like down to like the actual, like real fish. And it's like all real. But I agree, watching on the TV, some of it, I was like, how much of this is like visual effects work? So I just wonder if that's like a, my TV is too, too HD. Is that possible? Was that, was that like your, your motion? 
smoothing or whatever. I don't have. Oh, come oh. on. You think I have motion smoothing on? You, you listen to Tom. You turn it yeah, off. Yeah, that shit went right off. My TV is <laughs> a filmmaker mode. That's um, I, I mean, I, I haven't seen it yet. So again, no opinion on it. But I do know, I, I know like normies who have seen it. Not, well, I know someone who knows a normie who's seen it. I, so, and they, they also found it uh, tedious. So I think this is more than it being not, I think this is one of those shows that is 55 minute episodes when 45 would do. Apple has a lot of those, um, except for Sugar, which is perfect 36 minutes. 36 but, minutes yeah. but yeah, this person, they, they tapped out after the first episode um, because they, didn't find it funny and it was like too long so i, I I'm, I'm reticent to talk like spoilers thing but i watched the whole thing and the thing that's crazy about the show is that like it does have it does feel like a not a drama i don't think it's like a drama at all like i wouldn't be like but it's like dramatic elements within a comedy and like haha funny but not like laugh out loud funny but then as it gets towards the end of the season it actually gets like there's some insane like very silly stuff that felt like right out of barb and star kind of you know what i mean like it's like gets weird yeah. and funny and then the finale is like amazingly good and ends on like a great fashion and is way more dramatic than a lot of the rest of the season so i was just like one of the again so i did the panel i got uh, abe abe sylvia is the showrunner and he was like a lot of the time they're they're raison the chair or whatever you want to call that however you say that word um was that like they wanted to try to break the algorithm with the scripts and i feel like you could definitely feel that based on how it does not have a definable tone a lot of times i think that's also a lot of people's the issue with it like that that was one of my friend who um found it not funny or or asked like is it supposed to be funny right because he did not uh he didn't like he he is like okay with different tones but he didn't feel like they juggled the tones well right um, so and then it uh, um he also felt like it, it it like took too long to get there which he just said you know like by the end it's like it's like crazy. really broad yeah. stuff so uh we'll see this one's from casey hi joyce and chris love the show there has been confusion for a while regarding fx shows streaming on hulu especially now that they have been abandoned they have abandoned the fx on hulu branding but apparently now there's some confusion by at least some pundits regarding the difference between shows airing on hbo and shows streaming on max which is actually a lot easier to understand in my opinion when did hbo apparently stop existing and when did true detective become a max original that's from casey no not casey blois are you sure i mean he does not his burner we did read that he does have burners. So if this he is has, the real case, of boys, he, he didn't, he didn't DM this to you on Twitter. No, this is an email. This is a real email, but I mean, it is Casey boys. Love your work. But I don't think he would be using his real Love name, this. but maybe he would to throw off the scent. Yeah, that exactly. Easy, That's what I'm right? thinking. It's like a double blind thing. Like uh, we, we know, we know he's keeping tabs. I, I will know? say this. I've seen a lot of people, people don't like, I don't know if you know this choice, but people don't like David Zaslav. Oh, tell me more. He's he's often painted as a villain. Oh, what happened? Well, I don't know if people like him. And I don't really know what happened. But hmm. I know when uh, they changed Max from HBO Max, people were aggrieved that he got rid of HBO and how stupid it was to remove HBO from the equation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then that's become like, I've seen that a lot where people are like, this. anytime people make fun of him, it's like, then this idiot thinks that the HBO doesn't need to exist. And I feel like that has now become something that people think is real, but HBO is still a real channel. With real shows. Yeah, H HBO is still around. It's not TV, it's HBO. Um, you know, I, I guess people are confused because a lot of people have, you know, cut the cord as well. Yes. So that they just like conflate everything on Max. I don't know. But yeah, I've seen that too. Like an, an actual HBO show being called Max. Right. And I'm like, like True Detective, not a Max show that aired linearly on hbo from january to february mm -hmm. that's an hbo show um hacks is a mac show because it doesn't air linearly on hbo it does not have a time slot it's just it's just gonna drop on max on may 2nd correct yeah so like curb hbo show has been an hbo show for two decades yes <laughs> airs linearly on sundays has a time slot on hbo not a mac show no gilded age same thing hbo show airs on sundays succession hbo show 
Correct. Uh, White Lotus HBO show. Yes. Tokyo Vice Max show. Your favorite. <laughs> My fave. When's and, the finale, Joyce, of Tokyo Vice? Um, there's two more left, okay. I believe. So I haven't watched the finale yet. That's like, I haven't gotten to it yet. You don't want to lose it. Uh, like, you just know it's over. <laughs> so it's like. I mean, we said, you sent me that interview that Ansel did, and he was just like, this is the end. Yeah. Because it's like, there's no cliffhanger like season one. No. So, but it, it, I think it's, it's more confusing to me that, um, like, people are saying max instead of i mean i think i understand more if people call it hbo max i still call it hbo max, max. I still no but it. i mean like like a show like if you call succession hbo oh, max like I crediting see, crediting the show I like i wouldn't understand that more than calling it a max show right you know what i mean mm-hmm. and like the fx hulu thing like that's that that has stuck in my crawl for years ever since you know disney bought fox yeah. and yeah they got rid of fx on hulu so there's even more confusion and a lot of people think FX shows are Hulu shows, including Rotten Tomatoes last month when they tweeted that Hulu's Shogun has 100%. And I'm like, it's actually FX's Shogun. So. A <laughs> uh, couple more here because we're going to, there's been, we, we really, we kept it long, even when it's not a lot to talk about. This one is from not Chris Evans's mom. So again, it leads me to believe not not Chris Evans and now his mom. It leads me to believe this is actually Chris Evans, his mom. Hi, Joyce and Chris. You said Chris Evans won't win an Oscar, but do you think he'll ever win an Emmy? That's from not Chris Evans' mom. Well, he he had defending Jacob four years ago. Remember that? Yeah, of course. Who could forget? He had a great beard and a great kitchen on that show. Um, well. He hasn't been back on TV since then. No. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does like another limited series down the line. I don't know about winning. I don't. I don't know. It's <laughs> what would it be? I guess what kind of what kind of limited series would he do? Yeah. Do you think he will stick with Apple or go like somewhere else? Probably Apple. He did Ghosted for them. Remember Ghosted, that great movie? With Anna? I, I watched that. Same. It's um, just terrible. Yeah, but but we had a reunion with Mackie and Seb, so. I know. Um, uh, but like, what what would he play? I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm excited for the, the Celine Song movie he's supposedly doing, right? That rom-com. I do miss him, like... I just don't know what he... he he's in that, like... He's very funny. I always loved him as like love like what's your number, Chris Evans. You love like the the early 2010s like rom com. Yeah, I do like, like that a lot for him. I think he's like really funny and like really sharp. And he was always like Ryan Reynolds' light in those, or Ryan Reynolds was like Chris Evans' light in the rom com era. Like that's why I'm excited for the Celine Song one because it feels like that's what it's trying to recapture, even if it's more series minded. But I don't know for TV what he would do. Um, I mean, the the first time I ever saw him was not in Not Another Teen Movie. It was on Opposite Sex. Remember that? No. That was a Fox show that aired in 2000. It was a great summer for me because I had Opposite Sex and also Young Americans on the WV. Sure. Um, Opposite Sex, uh, other people in it, Milo Ventimiglia, mm-hmm. Allison Mack. Heard sure, of her? Sure. Yeah. Um, and I the reason I watched it was because of Margot Finley, um, who played Linda in D3, the Mighty Ducks. Wow. So that was my my hook in. So it only lasted uh one season. Um, but that was the first time I saw Chris Evans. And yeah, he hasn't done much TV since then obviously so oh he was in um the the animated scott pilgrim thing which you know fun whatever but lucas lee love love all his fake movies um i i mean i i don't i feel like he would probably have a quote-unquote easier time winning an emmy than an oscar certainly like i think he can do with like a right tv role like even in supporting or even like guest just guest guest star in something so uh, and then I think we have one more here. 
this one is from Alfie, but man, if this is not your burner account choice, I don't know what is that I just, it's like, because I feel like, or at least Alfie follows you on social media and I'm going to butcher this name. Hi, Joyce and Chris, uh, Ilya Malinin. Did I get that oh, right? That's perfect. Yes. I, I know what this is about. <laughs> Has been skating to the succession score all season. <laughs> And it's been frustrating to see this suddenly go mainstream in scare quotes over the weekend, <laughs> especially because everyone keeps calling it the succession theme, more scare quotes, when it's a medley. Anyway, what TV or movie score would you skate to if it were you were a figure skater? I know this because I saw you tweeting about this yesterday. I did. I tweeted about it yesterday because it was <laughs> fucking pissing me off because it's like he won on Saturday. He won Worlds. Yes. And then everyone has been picking up since then and they've been calling it the succession theme that is not the fucking theme <laughs> he skated to that is the you can call it the soundtrack call it a medley it's the score and also that was for his free skate i know most people don't know this but a free skate is four minutes the succession theme is only two minutes like it, that that would have been better for a short it's a short program mm -hmm. but anyway yeah, that was really pissing me off. Um, and I've been venting with my friend about that too, because we're, you know, we're we're huge uh, figure skating fans, Olympic uh -huh. fans. Um, but yeah, like this has been his free program this entire season. He announced in the summer um, the, his music selections for both his short and free skates. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like it was like Succession Soundtrack by Nicholas Bertal. Um, He won nationals in January skating to the soundtrack and it it went mini viral then it didn't go as viral as it did now but and Bratel storied it as well so it's like guys we've already been through this in January and y'all forgot and I know it was a bigger deal this time because he landed six quads in the routine and he set a record for the highest scoring uh free skate program mm -hmm. so um but yeah it's it's not the theme he skated to the theme like is a tiny part of the medley but it's 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 like five different selections from the soundtrack and it's also hilarious to me because last season he skated to euphoria mm -hmm. and obviously that did not go viral it wasn't as huge but no one in their coverage like even in like you know the skating world called it the euphoria score and well, what could because like also they they use I'm tired, but it was just like he skated to the Euphoria soundtrack, which is true. So he just skates to HBO shows. It just is um, shocking that it was not. I mean, it's so obvious. There's a theme for Succession. That's that's what like we all know what the off. theme is. We all know the theme. We all know the theme. So why are you using this in your headlines? Like every single, even the New York Times, like they interviewed him, and I'm like, that is not the theme. That is the soundtrack. But but I've also been waiting for someone to do a skating routine to succession so i'm glad he finally did it this season like when he announced this in august i was very excited um and i mean like i i had always said like i would have done a, a routine to the succession score or a gymnastics record? floor routine to the succession score okay um i don't know what would you skate to i'm trying to think i hmm. Succession is good, I guess. Maybe Dune. I've been into Hans lately. You could you could skate to Oppie. Oppie would be fun. Very dramatic. Yeah. I'll probably think of a better ones like later, but I'm like, those are those are good. I guess for now. Yeah, I feel like I mean there's a lot of like lighter scores that I like, but I don't know if that translates well on the ice, because I feel like you need more drama on the ice it needs you know to I mean? be like you know a little bombast are you using that word incorrectly not, i'm using it incorrectly you know how much i hate that <laughs> people stop using bombastic incorrectly please look it up it's not what you think it means <laughs> <laughs> oh you know what you should skate to you should skate to the all quiet score it's just three notes that actually would be bombast <laughs> and using Seriously. it correctly it's that would definitely be using it correctly a lot of bombast in that score um choice that's it that's what we got for this week so exciting stuff email us at slugfest at goldderby.com we'll be sure to read your emails tell us what you would skate to 
Uh, and I guess we'll be back next week to talk about a lot. Of, there's actually a lot next week that we're excited to talk about. Ripley. There's a lot of, a lot of shows premiering. Yeah, we can and pull the Band-Aid off Ripley. We can talk about loot. Your fave loot. We can talk about my fave sugar and it's 36 it. minute episodes. So come back for that. I guess we'll do drama next week then maybe. Mm. Or limited or we'll, we'll decide. It'll be so much fun. All right, I'll talk to you then, Joyce. Bye.